everyone. The International Space Station is now over 20 years old. The ISS was conceived as a habitable multinational collaborative modular space station which is going to operate continuously in a low Earth orbit. The International Space Station took 10 years and more than 30 missions to complete its assembly. In today's video, we're going to compare the International Space Station to China's Tiagong Space Station, which was recently put into low Earth orbit. Welcome to Reaching for the Moon, hosted by me, Ed Grace. The ISS is the result of unprecedented scientific and engineering collaboration among five space agencies, NASA from the United States, Roscosmos, Russia, JAXA, which is Japan, the ESA, European Space Agency, and CSA, Canadian Space Agency. And these five entities are representing a total of about 15 countries. The first ISS component was launched in 1998. Two years later, the ISS achieved a significant milestone with the arrival of the third element, the Russian Zvezda service module. This element enabled permanent human habitation of the ISS, which began three months after its arrival. The first long-term residents were Russian cosmonauts who arrived at the ISS in November of 2000. The ISS maintains an average altitude of approximately 250 miles by using the engines of the Zvezda service module or visiting spacecraft to boost its spacecraft orbit. The ISS circles the Earth every 93 minutes, completing about 15 and a half orbits per day. The ISS was the ninth space station to be inhabited by crews. Whereas the Tiagong Chinese space station is being constructed solely by China in low Earth orbit and will be orbiting between 210 and 280 miles above the Earth's surface. Its first module, the T and He, which stands for Harmony of the Heavens, which is the core capsule, was launched on 29 April 2021. Since the original launch, China has launched two other module missions. The first was the Tianzhu-2 cargo ship, which contains supplies and equipment needed for the orbiting space station. This is an image of the Long March 5 rocket on the launch pad prior to sending the Tianzhu-2 cargo ship on its mission. The second, Shenzhou-12 spacecraft, was launched on June 17, 2021, with three Takanauts on board and subsequently docked with the Tiagong space station. Thus, in a matter of a few months, China has launched and sent a crew of astronauts to their Tiagong space station. China's first crew to the Tiagong space station unpacked the Tianzhu-2 cargo supply ship once they were docked. The crew is going to carry out experiments, test equipment, conduct maintenance, and prepare the station for receiving two laboratory modules, which are scheduled to arrive at Tiagong next year. China has announced that there will be a total of 11 missions needed to complete China's Tiagong space station. Three missions have been launched so far, and the remaining missions are scheduled for late 2021 or 2022. As a comparison, it took more than 30 missions spread over 10 years to build the International Space Station, which by the way, is only planned to be operational through 2024. Yes, China's Tiagong Space Station will only be one-fifth the size of the International Space Station when completed, but it will certainly contain all state-of-the-art equipment. Both the ISS and Tiagong are classified as third generation modular space stations. Third generation space stations are defined by being assembled in orbit from pieces launched separately. The Tiagong space station is planned to have three modules, whereas the International Space Station currently has a total of 16 modules 
with two additional modules still planned to be added in the near future. The International Space Station is made up of five Russian modules, eight U.S. modules, two Japanese modules, and one European module. The Tiagong Space Station is constructed around the Tianhe core module and two scientific laboratory modules. The Tianhe is the main module and provides life support and living quarters for the three crew members as well as guidance, navigation, and orientation control for the space station. This module is also where the station's power, propulsion, and life support systems are located. However, the International Space Station is really divided into two separate sections. There are two mission controls, one in Russia and a second at Johnson Space Center in Houston. Both mission controls are manned 24 hours per day seven days per week. Two sections inside the International Space Station are the Russian orbital segment, and that's operated by Russia, and the United States orbital segment that is run by US, NASA, and together with a number of the other nations. Each space station segment has its own living quarters as well as science laboratories and communicates with, with its appropriate mission control. The TNE uses the Chinese docking system, which was originally based on the Russian docking system. It's undetermined at this time if the docking system used on the TNE is compatible with the International Space System docking system. China's Taikonauts recently installed a robotic arm to the outside of the TNE during a spacewalk, which means they also have airlocks on their ports. The International Space Station, at its peak, has supported as many as 13 astronauts at one time, whereas China's Tiagong spacecraft will only support a maximum of three taikonauts at one time. As you can see by comparing the two space stations, China has a very aggressive plan that it is implementing. Already, nine different countries have expressed interest to China in using the Tiagong Space Station to conduct research experiments. It's a very exciting time for space exploration. Well, with that, we're going to end our update on the uh, China's recent space exploration. We'll continue to provide updates on the progress that China makes in completing its Tiagong Space Station. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button as well as the subscribe and notification buttons to receive an email every time Reaching for the Moon posts a new video. Thank you for watching and remember always, failure is not an option. Bye.